What do you think is the best video game of all time? Is it Minecraft? He put a dick on my base. For its limitless creativity? He put a dick on my base. Is it Super Mario Bros. for their iconic characters? Or is it Tetris with its absolutely riveting gameplay? Wrong! It's none of them. There's only one game that deserves that title, Red Alert 3. Now, if you've never heard of Alert 3, that can only mean one of two things. One, you're a sane human being who's actually contributing to society. Or two, you're a child. Red Alert 3 was released in 2008, and it's a real-time strategy game where you get to play as one of three major factions. The Soviet Union, the Allies, and Anime Japan. Yes, you had that right. Anime Japan. In one of the campaign missions, you construct a literal giant three-sorted robot and go on a complete rampage obliterating Soviet cities. What sort of... As you might have noticed by now, this game is completely unserious. It was more or less made to fulfill the heterosexual male fantasy of a 16 year old. Now, while Red Alert 3 does have prequels, I'm not actually a boomer, so I wasn't around to play them. Da, Premier Romanov here. What's going on over there, Alex? Why, Mr. President? Whatever do you mean? Alex, I... I have, um... You're throwing everything you've got at us, Alex. We're supposed to be allies, you maniac! I'm the one that put you into office! Listen, very carefully. I am not your pet, Mr. President. We Romanovs have our legacy to consider. I don't give a wooden nickel about your legacy. You call them... This is more or less how I look like when 3 came out. And just to make the millennials feel old, the first Red Alert game was released in the late 1900s. The Red Alert series takes place in an alternative universe where time travel is somehow possible. Let me briefly mention the first two games. Imagine World War II just ended, and Albert Einstein himself decided to create a time machine to kill the leader of the Third Reich. Herr Hitler! Ja, was ist los? Ich habe keine Zeit hier rumzustehen. Ja, ich verstehe. And since World War II never happens, everything is great and the Allies and Soviets are just kind of hold hands. No, that would be boring for a war game. Instead, the Soviet Union decides to invade Europe. The canon ending is they lose due to a skill issue, and that sets the scene for Red Alert 3. Where's Romanov? The Soviets, facing defeat, go back in time to kill Albert Einstein, preventing him from sending a DM to the US about nuclear weapons. This ensures that the Star Stripes and T-Sipper Alliance doesn't have a technological superiority advantage. Now you might be saying, but Jojo, you just said that Albert Einstein went back in time to kill Hitler. Doesn't that create a paradoxical time travel situation? Well, in this scenario, you have to remember, shut up, you nerd. So let's recap. The Second World War never happens. Instead, the USSR and US fight each other, and the USSR loses. Then, the USSR goes back in time to prevent the Allies' technological superiority. However, Red Alert 3 is different from the prequels, because it actually adds a third side. Apparently, Albert Einstein was the only thing stopping Anime Japan from becoming a real thing. Yes? Ah, Commander. As you can see. Our situation is shockingly grim. The game features three different campaigns, starting with the Soviet Union. In the Soviet Union campaign, the Allies are on the run from Europe, and nearly all of Europe will soon be under Soviet control. Sir, the Allies are on the run soon. Western Europe will be ours. You hear that, General? Our enemies 
have been defeated. Each mission in the campaign features a co-commander, and some of them will be reused, but you'll always have a pal fighting alongside you. Now, let's take a look at the first mission. You and Santa's kinky sidekick have to defend Leningrad. Hey, comrade. It's Oleg. They may be your co-commander for this mission. Let's catch up if we live through this, yeah? Mine are the men in green uniforms. They only take orders from me, but hey, you can always boss me around if you want. You might be surprised how the Japanese were able to sneak their way into attacking Leningrad, considering the logistical nightmare of such an operation, but this is Red Alert 3. We can get away with illogical situations. The mission continues as you defend the fortress, and then you encounter Commander Kenji Titai. Greetings from the Empire of the Rising Sun. I am Commander Kenji Tenzai, and it will be a great pleasure for me dismantling your cherished city today. While he may seem intimidating, he apparently has no battle IQ at all. Despite having an entire fleet that could easily overwhelm the fortress defenses, he sends them in, one by one. It is the first mission, so I guess it makes sense that the AI wouldn't be the brightest, but at that point, you'd, you'd kind of just be trying to intentionally lose. In the second mission, the AI is slightly harder. You take Natasha, your special unit, and liberate your Tesla troopers from these Goomba-looking enemies. The story progresses and the Premier begins flirting, I, I mean, uh, talking about how cool and good Another you're, you're victory, doing Commander. so far. I knew my faith in you was not misplaced. Now, I know the Command and Conquer fans won't agree with me on this one, but there is totally a love triangle between General Krukov and Premier Chernenko, and us the Commander. Why don't we assign the young Commander to that task? Don't be ridiculous, Chernenko. The Empire has a massive force there. This is not an operation for a novice. We need someone with vast experience. I have full confidence that the commander will be victorious. I don't share your confidence. I appreciate your point of view, General, but this is not your decision. Yes, you have made that quite clear. Anyway, General Krukov will spend every mission putting you down. It is giving toxic behavior. The third mission, in my opinion, is the best so far, mainly because it makes sense. In this mission, you have to retake the port of Vladivostok, which is close to Japan itself. Don't ask how we went from fighting in Leningrad, then the outskirts of Moscow, and now all the way in Vladivostok. I guess Siberia is just completely undefended. In the third mission, you conquer this small, relatively undefended island, retake the naval base, and then lastly explode an imperial palace. So you've played as the Soviets and won fights against the Japanese, and then this happens. My fellow Americans, I am humbled that you have chosen me to be your new president. And I am honored to lead our country forward during these dark and dangerous times. The Soviet Union's recent push into Europe threatens our very existence as a nation. We've deployed troops and equipment to our European allies, but we haven't yet fully committed to this fight until now. I've introduced a bill which will quintuple the resources we are putting towards this conflict. Today, I say it is time for America to take a stand against the scourge that is godless communism. For if we don't, if we wait, soon, very soon, it will be too late. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. In the Soviet campaign, the Allies take notice that the Soviets are destroying anime Japan and decide to increase federal funding to do a counterattack. Now, this leads to the fourth mission, where you invade Switzerland of all places, and in this mission you uh, convince the uh, capitalistic banks to join your Workers United front. Now, the fourth mission is uh, quite fun. I believe it would have been even better if the Allies in the mission were playable, perhaps in a four-player multiplayer, but it's still fine as you can still play it with two people. The fourth mission also re-invites Santa's sidekick as your co-commander, and you both fight Lisette. Now, Lisette, the allied enemy commander you fight in this mission, has one of my favorite voice lines of all time. Surprise, Commander. We can transport our entire navy in the blink of an eye. So if I were you, I wouldn't blink again. Yeah, I know, right, guys? It's it's real intimidating. Bet you're scared. Um, now the full that the mission ends with you doing basically all the work, and then General Krukov trying to claim credit for the entire operation. Even though I'd actually say he's more of a liability in this mission, mainly because if you die, you automatically lose, and he's not really the best at surviving. In the fifth mission, 
the love triangle continues with Krukrov trying to girl boss, gatekeep, and gaslight the Premier. The fifth mission is pretty cool. You fight a generic Republican diehard commie hater of a general, and I'd say he's actually one of the weaker commanders, mainly because I feel like assault destroyers are just his entire shtick. And look, the unit looks cool, but it's not that good, especially when it can't shoot air, and that's what a lot of people will be using in this mission. The fifth mission has a minor plot twist when you try to reach a Tekken Tabatum. Basically, Jields, one of the Allied commanders, will try and retake it. It, it. It's cool. The sixth mission is interesting, because it's the last stronghold that the Allies have in Europe. So now it's you, Wish.com's version of Santa, and Krukov. This is where the gaslighting really comes into place, because the Premier tells us Krukov was secretly a traitor all along. We have discovered the malignancy within, Commander. The traitor is General Krukov. He is the dirty swallow responsible for the attempt on my life. Cut out the cancer. Destroy him before he destroys us all. And honestly, while it could have been possible, it was just a secret plot by the Premier trying to consolidate power. So in the sixth mission, you eliminate Krukov and you are now the general. You face the traitor! You are no soldier! Your time will come! Krukov's army nice has sworn allegiance Comrade. to you, Commander. You have done well in exterminating the traitorous General Krukov. It is good to know I can rely on you. Burn, you old fool! You had this coming! We destroyed the Allies and killed the traitor, all in the same day. We've had some good times, my friend. Perhaps one day we will again work together. Krukov is dead! Huzzah! Now, we've had enough of the Allies and decided to take upon the task of killing the Emperor. This is the seventh mission, and there are two more after this, but I'd go as far and say this is the hardest mission of the Soviet campaign. You're fighting every Japanese commander at once. My best advice for this mission is to be quick to eliminate commanders before they can fully build their bases. They'll arrive one at a time, the commanders, so you should have time. It's a fun mission and basically ends with killing the Emperor of the Rising Sun. Father! What have you done, you filthy savages? Have you no honor? In the 8th mission, the Premier makes you fight the Allies again, specifically to get rid of this diplomatic convoy sent to negotiate a peace treaty, even though both sides were, were planning on not following through. Once you've eliminated the Allies, he then decides to betray you. This was surprising to me, but I mean, this is the Italian Soviet Union, so I, ge I guess that makes sense. Thank you, Commander, for so thoroughly and brutally dispatching my enemies. But now I'm afraid you have outlived your usefulness. You know just enough to be a threat to me, and with that, the future of the Soviet Republic. I will not say das Vedanya, Commander. As I can assure you, we will never meet again. The last mission of the Soviet campaign is where you invade New York itself. You take down the Statue of Liberty and replace it with one of Lenin. Did any of this make sense? No, not particularly. Is it still a fun game? Yeah, I'd say so. Red Alert 3 is one of the most shenanigans can fill games out there, and there's still two campaigns I haven't talked about. Also, you should consider subscribing to my channel. The new premier. The future is yours, Commander. The future is yours. <laughs>